Today's review is the last of the Tesco beers that I bought from the new range. This is Tank Petrol version 2 from Northern Monk. But what's it going to be like? Keep watching to find out. Welcome back to Rocker's Beer Review. Today we're going to Northern Monk and this Tank Petrol. Absolutely stunning artwork on this. I really think that the artwork on this is worthy of being the best looking can art I've had this year, I think. Lovely gold, this character, this sort of female character sort of coming out there. Obviously it's an artist involved. It's a Faith in the Futures beer. Now, those that are observant amongst you will notice that Wait a minute, Rucker, we've done Faith in the Futures. We've done something called Tank Petrol with a similar artwork to this. So isn't this just the same beer? Well, it actually isn't because it's actually a rebrew, but with different ingredients. So it's a version two of Tank Petrol. It's coming in at 6.5%. It's an IPA, but apart from that, we know nothing else. There's lots of blurb about how Faith in the Futures is helping and all the rest of the, the charity and what it does and everything and every can sold. Uh, there's a donation to the Faith and Futures Foundation, which is all good. Two, uh, £3.75 from uh, Tesco, part of the four for free range. Blah, 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 you know all that stuff. Let's crack it open and get it in the glass and see if it's any good. Because I am drinking this pretty much soon after I've drank the Horde, which I thought was pretty good. That actually had the hops on the can. It said it had Comet, Simcoe and uh, Hot Comet, Mosaic and Citra in there. This one doesn't. So I'm not sure. I mean, when I had the last tank petrol, I thought it was okay. I thought it was the best of that range at the time, but it, I didn't think it was great. But then I had it a couple of other times after I'd reviewed it. Obviously, I didn't review it again. Um, and I thought, actually, this isn't too bad at all. But let's talk about this beer. Well, beer in a glass, I would say this is quite similar to the, the last one, the Horde. It's a bit more yellow. It's still hazy, thicker haze at the top, thinner haze at the bottom. We've got two fingers, well, one and a bit fingers of a fairly compacted white, ice white head. Similar, but not the same. Yeah, okay, let's see what the aroma's like. Hmm. I'd almost say that the the aroma is a little bit more subdued with this than, it, than the Horde. Hmm, it's very subtle in terms of aroma. I can just about make out a slight citrusy sort of note, but there's not much to speak of in terms of aroma. Well, let's see the taste. Cheers, everyone. It's quite light in the body. The carbonation is soft. I'd almost say softer than Horde. And that was quite soft but it's lighter and it's lighter in flavour. It tastes a bit more watery. I mean, it's 6.5, but you think, oh, 6.5, 7%, which was the Horde was, how much difference going to be? It's lighter though than the Horde. It's, it, it's thinner in terms of its body and flavour-wise, as much as it's very pleasant to drink, there's not much to it. The flavour sort of does wash itself away. It, it doesn't stick around. I'm getting lemons and grapefruit, and they're the main flavours. Not picking up much tropicalness. Mm. I'm trying to find some flavour with this beer, but it is, it's lacking. The body gives it a little bit, because it's such a soft carbonation, it's a very easy drinking and it's smooth and it's, you know, it's quite, it's pleasant on that front. But flavour wise, I get lemon, then I get a big hit of grapefruit. It sticks around a little bit. It's quite sharp, but then that's it. It doesn't really go anywhere. It's, it's a little bit basic. It's something a little bit tart in there as well. I think, it, I think say it's grapefruit, but it, it might be something else that's, that's in there. I think it may be sort of lime. It's, it, the, the zest is quite there in terms of, it's very sort of lemon rind, it's lime juice, grapefruit rind. 
And that's quite, you know, enjoyable. Um, it, it's good. But the star of it is really it's the softness in terms of that mouthfeel. Yes, it's light, but it's quite soft. Makes it so easy to drink because there's no real fizz to it. You know, you just drink it down and it's like, oh, flavours there. Clings a little bit, but then goes. It's it's not bad. But after drinking a hoard literally 20 minutes ago, I thought they had a lot more going for it. This one, although it's not horrible, it's definitely not horrible. There's nothing bad about it. And I, then I start thinking, oh, is it because I, is it because I've drank so many great beers and I've drank a lot of double IPAs this year? My, my, is my judgment clouded a little bit by it? I don't know. I think if I drank this beer three years ago as a first sort of supermarket craft beers, I would have gone, oh, this is interesting. Oh, this is nice. I like, oh, God, my God, that body's soft. And oh, yeah, oh, there's lots of citrus notes coming in. It's got that. It's got flavour. It's just a little bit one-dimensional and it's a little bit on the basic side. I think that's it. And I think, you know, but when I think of supermarket beers, aren't they all like that? When do you get real complexity and real sort of oomph with a beer that you get from a supermarket? And then that's when me make makes me think, are oh, all supermarkets? I think I said in the last video, but are all supermarket beers the same? You know, are they very similar? I don't think there's a lot of IPAs that we've had in the supermarkets that aren't like this because they don't have the body, they don't have that softness, which is a good thing. And when it comes to, well, if they haven't got that, have they got more flavour? But I don't think they definitely have as well. So it still leads the way. Both of these beers, you know, they're, they're, they're still some of the best supermarket beers you're going to buy. What's better? Well, I mean, you know, I do like Distant Call cool from, uh, I think it's a North Bruin from Asda. That's a good beer. Uh, Azoka they used to do in Tesco, which is a vocation double IPA. Very good as well. Um, if you go to Morrison's, you've got Mosaic Maze, that IPA from Polly's. That's pretty good. Um, then you've got their other sort of um, Northern Monk beers. They're like the uh, Transient and Order of the Faith. You know, they, they're they good. I don't even know if they're still available, but I'm sure I've had Transient recently. There's a little bit more to it. This feels a bit light, but I like it. I drink it again. It's funny because I thought oh, I'll have this straight after Horde, but it's, it's, it's quite difficult to tell the difference because one citrusy and very, very soft. And the other one, although it's got a soft mouth and it has some citrus notes in it, there's a little bit more tropicalness to it. A little bit more to it. So I still think that the Horde is the better beer. This is drinking more like Another World, which was a 6% hazy I play from Norway. This had a better overall flavour, but it didn't have the mouthfeel that this has got. So I'm a little confused in terms of these, these beers because I don't know. They're all very samey in terms of quality. But I think that quality isn't bad, you know. I, I when I think of the the test of the Sainsbury's beers I had, the quality was very up and down and up and down. You had that two, the two horns ones that was hot, really not horrible, but it was really disappointing. It tastes like a shandy. Then you had the tiny rebel one, which wasn't too bad at all. The Polly's was a really good beer. What was the other one I had from there? But let me have a look at my. I've got it up there. Mm, I don't even got it. Up well, I mean, then you then you compare stuff like Brew Dog. This is better than the brew dog, the um, the cat one, the lucky lucky break. That's what it was called, lucky break. Definitely better, mainly because it's softer. The mouthfeel, there's more oats and stuff in this, which is better. But it is there is definitely a big difference. The big difference between supermarket beers and bottle shop beers. And you've got to work out whether you want to pay less than three quid for a beer that you buy for, you know, I'm, I'm talking about buying four of them. So you're paying less than three quid compared to if you go to a bottle shop and you buy four bottle shop beers where you could be paying, we would be, if, you, if you're buying a reasonable IPA from Asvex or Polly's or Track or Shaw Shop or any of those sort of breweries, Rivington even, you know, you're paying five to five pound fifty as being the sort of sweet spot you might pay a little bit less you might get down of just under five quid 
and at the same time you might go to 560, 570. But there's a big gulf, but the flavour is definitely better. So there's there's definitely two tiers. You're not going to get a supermarket beer that I think any I don't think there's any supermarket beer, and I include Polly's, which is a really good pal Al. I don't think you can get a supermarket beer that is as good as the top breweries bottle shop beers. But at the same time, you've got to work out, well, I can drink more of the supermarket beer, so what do I want? And that is a question that I think that are thousands of YouTubers that review beer and hundreds of people out there that drink both bottle shop and, and supermarket beers are, are at that quandary. It's easy to say these aren't as good because they aren't. They aren't as good. It's simple. That, that That's a simple answer. Are these beers better than the stuff that you're gonna generally going to buy in the bottle shops? No, they're not. But at the end of the day, the price, are you going to get a beer for under three quid in a bottle shop? You're not going to, I don't even think that exists. You know, I, certainly when I go to Prost, I don't think I've ever seen a beer under three quid, unless it's like a low alcohol beer or even an extra parallel. Maybe you might get it under that, but you're probably not going to, you know, so you're not going to get that. Um, so that's, that's, the, that's the question you've got to answer. And I always think that, as summer comes up, and I probably will drink more, you know, you're, you're drinking three or four beers of an evening or the weekend, it's sunny, you know, you're enjoying it, you're going to barbecues and stuff like that. I'm not going to want to spend five and a half quid on four or five beers. That seems expensive. When I can drink something like this, and I can drink four of these and pay less than 12 quid for them, and uh, have a very reasonable beer and by the time i'm on to the third or fourth and the fourth one I probably won't care as much so what i would suggest is you if you're ever gonna if you're gonna drink four or five beers of a night get a bottle shop beer drink that one first enjoy it think this is great and then start drinking your supermarket beers that's the best way I think that you could enjoy the enjoy the beers. But let me know in the comments what you think. I'm starting to go off on a bit. I'm getting nearly ten minutes here in this in, in this video, which is a bit too long. I've actually drank this beer, so it's all right. You know, I've drank it. It's it's pretty good. Yeah. So quickly summarise: Northern Monk, great can artwork, a very reasonable uh, IPA from a supermarket. I, I thought that this and Horde. What I'd seen, I haven't seen lots of videos, but I've seen lots of comments on Facebook and stuff saying how rubbish they are and not that great. Well, then they're not as great, but I don't think they're bad beers. I think that they're they're very well made beers for the money that you're paying for them. There we go. There's the takeoff. Now let's get some scores. Okay, the scores are in for Tank Petrol version 2. I've whittled on on this video, so let's make this short and snappy. Starting with aroma. Appearance. Flavour. Value for money. My overall experience. And we top the scores up. It's another recommended beer. I think that if you're a, if you if I'm giving a a beer review in the seventies for a supermarket beer that you can pick up as part of an offer, you know whatever for under three quid, then definitely worth picking up. So total score, yeah. I think that the best one was still Horde out of these four. I think this one was probably the second best. Then you had this one, um, and then the vocation one, but. They've all been pretty not, pretty not too bad, really. I mean, that sounds like a bit of a cop-out, but they are pretty not too bad. But as I said, what you need to do is drink craft beer from a bottle shop and craft beer from a supermarket, mix them together, not literally, but, you know, have a one or two of those. And, you know, by the time you've had three or four of them, you won't really care. But make sure your first one is a bottle shop beer that you're paying more money for. Then you'll realise the quality and you'll appreciate it. Hope this is giving you a little insight into the supermarket beers from Tesco's and what I think of supermarket beers generally, but I want to know what you think about it. You know, if you've got this far in the video, which I have whittled on a lot about, let me know in the comments what you think of these supermarket beers. 
Can you remember what supermarket beers were like a year or two, three years ago? Have we seen improvement as it stagnated? I do think that the quality has stagnated, hasn't got better, but I don't think it's got worse. Yes, you can still buy some beers from supermarkets that are rubbish, but if you stick with North, you stick with North and Monk, you stick with Polly's, to some extent you stick with Vocation and Salt, you'll be all right. So that's enough for me today. Until the next one, you know what you do. Drink a craft beer and keep on rocking.